You may have heard people refer to April as Autism Awareness Month or Autism Acceptance Month and wondered what is the difference between awareness and acceptance? And don't we need both? So let's explore what awareness and acceptance really are and why I think we need acceptance to be our goal. What is awareness? For many people, popular media will be their only lens into what being autistic is like, or more accurately, what they think being autistic looks like. If they're out in the world, they might notice someone act like a character from a show and think, aha, I bet they're autistic. I think this is what many people think awareness is, being able to identify someone and how to treat them. Awareness is more than just information for individuals though. One of the reasons I talk about representation is because it informs our culture, and our culture includes things at a more systemic level too, for example, legal policies. You may not think of laws as part of awareness, but they are. For starters, what do you think the laws are based on? I mean, besides lots of money and lobbying, especially if you're in the United States. Cultural opinion informs voters and policymakers because their perception and knowledge of autism is going to affect what they think will be helpful. With a history of autism largely painted as a burden within a hyper-individualistic culture, we get practices like ABA. The responsibility falls on the autistic individuals to change their behavior through coercion rather than culture changing to accept those behaviors. At some point, I will make a video that really goes in depth about the issues and history of ABA. But regardless of how you feel about it, hopefully you can see my point that it is an individualized solution. Although I don't think it's a coincidence that Ivar Lovas, who created ABA, went on to work for the feminine boy project, Conversion Therapy for Gay People. Portrayals of supposed heroism for treating us like human beings, which I've talked about before, contribute also to removing a sense of agency from us and increase the chances we get excluded from these policy decisions. Supposed experts are consulted with little to no input from people with a lived experience. In Virginia, there was recently a law put into place that puts ABA services in schools. Many autistic advocates express concern because of the harm that can cause, and the law can create compulsory situations where a child is forced to use these services. Many of us were also surprised and disappointed given that Danica Roem, who is the first openly trans woman to serve in state legislature, seemed to dismiss the concerns from autistic advocates during the law's formation looks kind of similar to Sia's response about her garbage. Both of these examples exploit a narrative to dismiss those of us who bring up concerns because it's supposedly for some other type of autistic and they've done their research. For example, thanks to the law in Virginia, more autistic people will get put in ABA. If another state is looking to craft a policy, they will look to other states as examples. So Virginia's law will likely get used as a model. And of course, these policies will be many people's first experience learning about autism, whether that's seeing someone else receive this type of service in schools, or a parent learning about their child's diagnosis and told what they should do. I suspect this is also why autism is often associated only with kids and not adults, because most awareness is aimed at parents. If instead, the culture became more accepting, we would see needs provided through systemic changes that directly benefit the quality of our lives. This could include things like access to education, healthcare, or income. What is acceptance? The word acceptance can be used in very different ways. Like many may use it to mean they will tolerate something, or perhaps they view it as a leveled up version of awareness, thinking they just have to be kinder. And I do want us to be treated kindly, but that doesn't matter if we are not given agency and the means to improve our own lives. This can include acts of kindness on an interpersonal level, especially if you are in a position of authority, like a parent, boss, or teacher, because you probably have the ability to change an environment or provide access to support. There is one more important aspect to acceptance, that we don't need awareness to have acceptance. You may be wondering, how do we improve the quality of lives of autistic people by giving them more agency and means to better their lives without knowing who they are? For starters, if someone says they are autistic, that should be enough. Self-diagnosis is completely valid. But more importantly, if you have to know someone is autistic, it defeats the point. The only way it makes sense to require a diagnosis or disclosure of that diagnosis to get access to needs is if you want to help the least amount of people possible. I didn't find out I was autistic until I was 32. 
Even if supports existed, I would have gone that entire time without them. And no matter how early we may be able to find out a child is autistic, why should a child struggle at school or home before then? Not to mention all the other issues with getting a diagnosis, like non-males having a much harder time receiving one. How many people's lives would have been improved if supports were in place and freely accessible to anyone who wanted them? The more I looked into autism to help our kids and myself, the more I realized the best solutions I found were universal, like just treating kids with more respect and giving them agency. In healthier parenting groups, I'd often see Ross Green brought up. I have enjoyed and recommend some of his more recent work, like raising human beings. The model Green advocates for is called CPS, which stands for Collaborative and Proactive Solutions. The gist of this model is to assume when there are behavioral problems, to treat those as symptoms that there is an unmet need rather than trying to stamp out the behavior itself, which of course leads to more collaborative and proactive solutions, as the name suggests. What I love about this approach is, it will benefit those most harmed by the current system, like autistic kids, more, but it will still benefit everyone. And as it turns out, if we are looking for systemic changes that improve the quality of our lives, like getting access to healthcare, housing, income, or other basic needs, the easiest way to get these changes is acknowledging everyone needs them. It also makes it easier to get people to support our cause because it benefits them as well. These changes through acceptance also create awareness on their own. If CPS was the standard, children would be less likely to get so overwhelmed or have a meltdown in the first place. The approach would inherently be more accepting of a wider range of behaviors, which in turn means more people would see these differences not as something to only be handed off to specialists. It would be something that we could all learn from and contribute to providing support in any way we can. Doesn't this sound a lot better than trying to force one standard approach on everyone, which often leaves many frustrated or worse harmed? Only allowing deviations if you're lucky enough to receive a label saying you're different? Instead, solutions could be unique to an individual to meet their specific needs without making it only their problem to solve, because the approach would not be so rigid. Everyone would learn more about autism because our needs wouldn't be seen as separate. Conclusion. We need both awareness and acceptance, but the goal is always acceptance. And acceptance is not just leveling up awareness. It is actively improving autistic people's quality of life by providing material needs that give more agency to them. I talk about things like representation on this channel because awareness can lead to acceptance, but we need to work together to get meaningful acceptance. Until we can accomplish that, the better awareness we have still does some good. For example, had there been better representation about autism, I may have found out I was autistic much earlier in life, which could have really helped me. But we can't let awareness be the end goal, or we will reinforce feedback loops that bring us to a dead end. To wrap up talking about autism acceptance for April, I want to recommend a comrade of mine, Alice Evelyn, who has a great video on what it's like being autistic and trans. She does great work and I highly recommend her channel in general. If you'd like to contribute to this channel, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash questing refuge. Stay safe out there, everyone. And remember, you're not alone.